two champions select no delays today, Papa Smithy, Thresh and Rengar will be starting off the band for Kongdu Monster, while LeBlanc banned away from Edge from Dark Passage. So the meta that we saw yesterday was very focused around mid lane bands. The god tier mid laners, the likes of the LeBlanc, the Syndra, the Rise, very frequently taken out. We saw some Syndra towards the end of the day. Let's see if things change here, because we didn't really see jungle bands. One or two Lee Sin bands, one Rengar band, but it felt like people were just like, all right, let's swap Rek'Sai for Lee Sin and see what happens. Now we've already seen two jungle bands, so already the texture, specifically the mid lane, can't be targeted. We saw four to five mid lane bands in some games and series yesterday. Very clear top two in most of those roles. Top lane jungle, as you were mentioning, bot lane as well. We're seeing kind of the trifecta. Didn't see any Caitlyn, funny enough. Uh, many people think that's Ooh, still a very strong go. pick. As the Ivern ban, that was banned out yesterday against uh, the Vega Squadron, who did manage to get it in one of their games. Zanzara tried it in the jungle, didn't manage to pan out for him, unfortunately. I mean, it's worth knowing that, of course, they showed that in their qualifier for this tournament. So clearly, you look at the most recent match, you see Ivern and carried in that match, and like, okay, no Ivern. Different story here, Dark Passage. Haven't necessarily shown it in key games, but maybe it's a good scouting report on Taku. Known yeah. for his aggressive picks, got a lot of Nidalee, which fell through to him on 621, which is when the Challenger patches were played. It's a new ball game. Just to confirm, we're on 623, second patch of the 2017 preseason meta. Some of the old picks are strong, and Syndra left up. Inevitably, Syndra picked first pick. Not a lot of uh, mid lane bands outside of that LeBlanc into this champion select. That's left up Rise, that's left up Syndra. Lots of, a lot of the big power picks in that mid lane. So Syndra will be the priority here for Edge. Be very happy with that pickup. Both junglers have been taken away. So Rek'Sai is still open, um, depending on who wants that as a top tier pick. But again, Poppy, one of the top two in the top lane. And Jin, the choice AD carry for Holy Phoenix. Look, Holy Phoenix is a strong Jin, but I think there's actually a takeaway pick from Sol. Sol was the first player in Korea to play Jin in competitive play. Prey went on to make it his champion, and then everyone was playing the Jin. But Sol was one of the first. He was very, very solid. He's one of the players who, even when they were losing basically every match, you could look at Sol and be like, this guy's got something about him. This guy is talented. So it's a takeaway pick. You might wonder, with Ash, Jin available, why first rotation the Jin? It's a takeaway pick from Kongdu Monster. And there's a Rek'Sai in return. You would expect that coming out from Kongdu Monster, not allowing Dark Passage another top tier pick. And a Nautilus just matching the Poppy in the top lane. Those two we saw a bunch yesterday as that 1v1 er uh, erupted. Uh, don't speak too soon though. We did see the LCK team at All-Star flex the Nautilus a lot. We don't see a support yet. Probably not going to be the Marta style support Syndra, but there could definitely be a support Nautilus depending on what's drafted here. So I really am a big fan of either first picking or taking an early rotation Nautilus because of its flex pick status, but then it could just be Tank Wars in the top lane and that's what it's going to be. Yeah. I like to stick to my classic play-by-play -play statements there. It's just like, he's got to be top lane and then we get the boss. I'm in, wearing so. the tie. I'm the expert <laughs> over here. Uh, unfortunately, I just have the haircut, so you can you can tell I'm the play-by-play -play just from the camera. But Rise and Tam Ketch going to be picked up here from Dark Passage. Rise, very strong pick. I uh, didn't always see that as a priority yesterday, but I know Deficio thinks he's still up there as a, a strong pick. I'm really excited to see Dark Passage's last pick jungle. So we saw some teams try to last pick jungle and then just pick a Rek'Sai. Obviously Rek'Sai already taken, but you know, pick a standard jungler. Are we going to see a Frisky one? Are we going to see the likes of the Hecarim, a strong engager? they got a pretty balanced cop here, good engage. Specifically a Poppy going to be taking on a lot of that engage. Will we see another engage champion from the jungle, something to shut down the Syndra. Gap close, getting on top of her is a very, very important thing if you're gonna take down the Syndra pick, which is so strong in the laning phase. What did Dark Passage wanna take? And oh, this would be interesting. Oh, and it's locked in as well. Vi coming into the jungle. Just like you were saying, Papa Smithy, you take away Lee Sin, Rek'Sai, then you have a bunch of champions underneath in that B tier status. Vi, one of them. And look, it suits Ku's playstyle. He is an aggressive jungler. Nidalee was available, but a lot of people passing it over on 623. And I asked for Engage, certainly a champion that can close the distance on Syndra. And it's one of those picks that, again, whispers of, of the Vi have been around. People like, this champ is legit good. It's up there with the B tier picks. Feels like Rek'Sai, Lee Sin, God tier. And then we've got, say, eight to 10. This is one of those. And now that a lot of the camps are very single target focused, sure there are more of the rats. Sure, there are the crubs being divided, but the big buffs, Vi takes them very, very fast, has that mobility to get around. Really interesting to see Vi in competitive play once again. Love to see Kill on this champion. You mentioned he's an aggressive player. That's all uh, he's pretty much played for his entire career. He always likes to get on top of those carries, try and take them out himself, see what type of build he goes for. No doubt we'll be seeing the courage of the Colossus on that pick. Just a, a matter of 
how much damage focus he'll have in terms of his build now. See Holy Phoenix on your screen, uh, a mainstay of the League of Legends team, uh, scene for the longest time. Not really breaking into those big leagues that he wanted to, and finds himself back once more onto Dark Passage. Now we get this best of one, an interesting one. Kongdu on their way to the LCK, looking good in smaller tournaments, looking to step up here. And then Dark Passage perennially entering a tournament as big underdogs, but with some strong players, with a chance to prove themselves. They go a long way to getting to the winner's match if they could take down Kongdu Monster. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we're on to the Rift Trial first game of the day. It will be Group B of IEM Gyeonggi, Kongdu Monsters shaping up against Dark Passage. Let's see how this one turns out for both of these two teams. And this is a best of one, so winners will progress to the winners match. Losers will go down, of course, to losers, and those will be best of three. So plenty more chances for these teams to stay alive and also to get their shot at the semifinals. But this will be uh, starting off the proceedings for today, Papa Smithy. Now let's talk about Vi, you know, one of those champions. It's certainly be passed over, say, an Olaf in this position in previous patches. You mentioned that Courage of the Colossus is the big tank mastery du jour as Google walks up. Hello, uh, Bart's coming up there, He's but really low. CC down and pop up. That's the fourth shot in from Jin. That'll be the first kill on the first blood over to the AD carry. Disastrous start for Kongdu. Yeah, Bard was just too disconnected from the likes of Roach. There were other people that could be on the front lines. Bard very, very Maybe squishy on the few yes. disadvantages this champion is, those low base stats and taken out and exactly the steadier that Dark Passage wants. And you can't ask for a much better uh, kill allocation than it going straight to that gym. And that will be a long sword on top of his Darren's blade to start up this laning phase. Not a great position for Sol to be in. And I'm sure Bard will be apologizing for that. In the short play, turned the corner, found a lot of Dark Passage members behind it. But we'll get into this laning phase now. Flash is down as well, so that will be a possible target for ganks. But again, we should return to Vi. Vi is the big X Factor in this mm. game. And the reason why she's interesting is that she actually is a deceptively good user of Courage of the Colossus. Olaf, no way to proc it, doesn't have strength of the ages. One of the reasons he starts to fall off. The thing about Vi is that, of course, she gets that auto attack passive shield when she gets in there with abilities. And then because Q has the displacement effect, it also procs Courage of the Colossus. So suddenly, the earlier ganks, when you're just not exploding people, when you're actually just looking for initiation rather than having the sheer damage to kill someone, she actually has enough shielding between Courage and the passive to not just die instantly. Before, she was just, you go in, either you kill or be killed, because she has really only one way to go and fight. Now she gets that extra shield, Masteries help her out, the single target big camps help her out, and now just jumping up in priority. First time didn't work out. Let's invade once more, says Bard, and he'll place down that ward. So get a bit of knowledge, a bit of vision of where Ku is starting for his jungler. And Punch will be on those Raptors as well. And there's Riot just farming out this lane, edge in the mid lane, up against the Mortaru. The Syndra versus Rise, both uh, top tier picks in the current meta about farming for the first couple levels for both of these players. Top lane, Roach against uh, Whipto. Whippo? Uh, I mean, Whippo. Well, let's just focus on the fact that it's Nautilus versus Poppy. And by focus, I mean just don't even don't show. Focus. Come on, observers. Lane. You know not to show <laughs> Nautilus versus Poppy traits. We just need to acknowledge the players that are up there and say, we'll check back in on how they're doing in 30 minutes' time when they picked up four items and join the team fights. And that's the thing is that, you know, people are very quick to be like, oh God, it's the tank meta again. So boring seeing these tanks up top. And if you're showing them trading, I completely agree. But what's kind of lost in translation is that, let's say this was a very different lane. Jace versus, I'll just say Shivana. You know, yeah. Non-initiation picks, you know, poke picks. In lane, sure, there's kill pressure, but they teleport into a fight and they're teleporting defensively. They don't really have flank opportunities. The cool thing about Nordless, Maokai, and Poppy being in the meta is that if you get good wards down, they're going to start a fight in the team fight phase. So exciting picks for the team fight phase, exciting picks for teleport flanks, not exciting picks for the laning trade. So it's a different type of excitement, but unless we do see jungle in intervention, not much interest in watching top. I mean, Roach is very much pushed up, and Ku is charging the Vault Breaker. 
Unfortunately, he cuts the vision by walking into the brush, so Ku will think second of it. Jump back to his tower and his top laner. But indeed, we saw Flame yesterday have some killer performances on Poppy and was pretty much unkillable. He was pretty much the reason that Immortals uh, won the last game because four people initiated on him, hit him for like 20 seconds, realized they weren't doing any damage, and then he killed them all. So. <laughs> Getting really low in these trades, won't quite fall. Very Ooh. steadfast on those summoners. Yeah, he was he was uh, definitely knowing that he had a little bit more in the tank just in case he was trading up against the cannon minion. I was a little bit scared for him. But he knew how much he could take, so he'll jump away now, go back to base. And Ku has not yet been able to get involved in these lanes to try and make a gang happen. But he is still trying to look for it. Went to one's top, and will now see Punch in his top river. So. We'll have to try and be more inventive about his gank paths. It's level 5, good damage gank, but no more than that. Kind of a Middle East type at this point where, okay, there is set up CC in terms of the poppy heroic charge, also the rise route in mid lane, but you know the real cash is at level 6, just like a Nocturne, just like other level 6 junglers. That's when Bai really hits her power spike. So unless we see somebody hugging the wall in top lane, probably best to just power farm, and power farming is something that's very viable. That's an awkward thing to say with Vi in the game, but very viable in the new jungle. Vi sounds for viable in the new jungle. Hey, hey, I don't say too much, otherwise I'll wish that DP gets through and you get Immortal versus Immortals. <laughs> that's, uh, that's an interesting one. That would be, that'll be fun to cast. Um, of course, we're in Korea where we once had Lee playing Lee Sin against <laughs> Eve playing Eve. That was, uh, that was a great game. How did your play-by-play yeah. play cope with that? That was Doa, so he, uh, you know, he had <laughs> his fun. It. He did his best. <laughs> Okay. I just got solo killed he here. He's just gonna get auto attacked to them. I don't really know what was going on there. He was just standing still. And if this was an online tournament, like so many times I've seen Dark Passage, I would say, oh, lag. But we're on LAN. I don't know what happened there. Hopefully we get a replay. Yeah, we don't have a pause either. So have to assume that was just completely watching another lane or something along those sides. Very punished. Solo kill starts. And this is certainly a trend that can extend. You give this Syndra one solo kill in lane. She comes back with a fiendish codex, a lost chapter. In this case, it's a lost chapter and extra Dorans, and kill pressure only goes up from here. False. Yep. It's uh, it's dark days when Syndra gets to the point where she one shots whoever she clicks R on, and it's rapidly getting to that point. So needs to try and shut that one down. But who? Has now hit level 6, so he might look towards the mid lane, as you can see him top side of that river. And Amorteru also returning to the mid lane, so maybe he'll get this gank down. Edge did have to use his flash, remember, to pick up that kill. And Ku is charging up, the Vault Breaker moves on to him, but it's bot lane where there's a fight. Nope, never mind, it's mid lane. And Edge, last auto attack, denting blows, not quite enough damage to finish him off. Amorteru not jumping in there, didn't really react very fast to that gank. Yeah, no, the cleanse from Edge actually came up trumps. They were Cleanse away the rune prison from Immortal. No flash from Auto to actually just get another overload in the face of Edge and escapes and still at 150, 200 health. So very important that the answering kill didn't go to the right to kind of steady the gold flow in the mid lane. Sindra doesn't die. Sindra's able to get the recall in. And nice stuff from Dark Passage, but important that now the long cooldown have to wait for the next Vi ultimate. And they don't get purchased out of the first one. Maybe Ku can go for another repeat gank in the mid lane with Edge being down to summoners. Ku still has his flash, so he can Q flash uh, if Edge tries to get out of it. So very hard for him to miss that Q now. Uh, one of those fun interactions that Vi can do. And now handing over to Blue Block to Mortaru. So there is still a window for Ku to open up a mid lane gank. Let's talk a bit about Kongdu, uh, a team that we've already spoke about the fact that their members you know, needed more seasoning and challenger, which of course they got playing through and winning the summer season of the NLB here in Korea. But the other thing is, strategically, when they did play in the LCK, they had one style. They could play a poke comp and they could do nothing else. Literally, Varus mid, poke comp. They were very good, they were very disciplined. Again, they still had the problems where their standard lanes would lose because there was greater talent on the other side. But if they could get a poke comp going, they were actually very smart at closing out the game, strategically intelligent, just lacking the kind of playing quality they needed to win consistently against the top teams in Korea. Watching them in Kesper Cup, they have adapted. They have definitely picked up more strings to their bow. They can play a pick comp, which is usually what Nautilus and Syndra Rek'Sai will symbolify. They can play multiple styles. They have gotten a lot better. Specifically, Roach is way better. They had their main issues in LCK were top lane and jungle. They've changed their jungler. Punch is much more impressive than Crush was. And Roach has gotten a lot better. Can play more styles. Still favors the tanks. And speaking of tanks and Roach. I mean, Poppy has been wailing on Roach for a good long while before Q gets involved into the top lane. Punch with the counter gang doing a lot of damage. Queen of the Zersai going ham here. Ku will have to try and back away. 
Kind of duking it's back and forth, but Edge coming in from the mid lane, dodges out of the way of the force of Will. Q oh. anchor to the back of the head. What's the kill? The first kill. Whippo, not long for this world, but Punch goes all in, and Whippo's still alive. Edge now closing in from the backside, lands the Dark Sphere, taking lots of damage, but the final W does finish him off. A nice two for one there for Kongdu. Poppy's deceptively tanky, but overall pretty good trade for the side of Kongdu Monster. Yeah. Chose their targets well, hooked to death. Don't see that interaction very much from Roach. Pick up the two. Overall, pretty good stuff. Skill shot accuracy and that kind of mechanical step up I was alluding to on full display. That was a new dawn interaction right there. The uh, anchor finishing him off. Lots of damage coming out. If you build AP Nautilus, which I have on occasion, uh, Q actually does a lot of damage. Great to max as a first one. I always love you talking about your solo Q transgressions. <laughs> Some people, so far. some people talk about their solo Q picks. Your picks are always transgressions, because it's always, yeah, I'm playing my AP Alistair, slash I'm playing my Elawi. Uh -huh. You are you are certainly the hipster, sir. Thank you. It's also great, because sometimes I get to talk to Spawn, and he's usually doing the same thing that I am. Uh, AP Alistair, big proponent of that pick. Um, but unfortunately, not going to see that one today. The one time that we do see a weird pick, I'm your man. I will know all about it. I was very sad I was not on the Maui and Riven game that happened at All Stars, but maybe we'll see one of those picks. I'm hearing that Riven with Courage of the Glosses is pretty decent nowadays. And Ryus with Courage of the Glosses too. I didn't actually spy the Keystone, but would be surprised if it wasn't the Courage, just because the ranged procking with the Rune Prison, which is one of those hard CC abilities, and then just the option to also Q, means you just suddenly early in the game have just casual 300-400 extra HP, which really helps in the trades, especially to keep sturdy against someone like Syndra. We did see uh, some Storm Raiders and IWCA, and then going into All Stars, pretty much everyone's going through the classes on that rise. So, pretty strong. And okay. also has innate shields as well, and also has that uh, shield of the Seraph. So, and we saw it with Maple, right? Who was basically like, I'd never seen this before. And the next game, he played Rise <laughs> and he had Courage the yeah. Glasses. So, a quick study, clearly seeing that it's a very strong mastery choice. Oh, I have double the health now. Excellent. Punch in the enemy jungle, he is taking away some crooks. Uh, it takes quite a long time to take away camps now because they do kind of do that slime thing and turn into smaller crooks now. One of the big interactions there, because Vi is a pretty good power farmer, but because she has to use her gap close ability to clear camps, you max Q first to Vault Breaker. Uh, the moment that she's found in the jungle by a Rek'Sai, she's instantly out jeweled by the fact that she can't get out. She can either hard commit, or if she sees the mid lane miss, basically has to run away. So Rexai is just happy to pop in, take away camps, and really nothing Vi can do. She's not looking for the 1v1. It's when she has the jump on someone, the Vi really shines. This Bolt Breaker does a lot of damage. Every point you put in that, it's an uh, extra 50. But landing it is oh. where you have to be, and that's just a full combo once again from Edge. And I don't really understand what's happening in these trades, because the Mortar just kind of takes it to the base. Is it a trade when Edge takes damage from a turret and just kills the other person for full health? Well, I, I guess not. I guess it was just him being brutally murdered. I mean, that was late. basically taking the stick to Pinata, being like, bash, bash, bash. And the Pinata looks very pretty. That's that. Yeah, but it was 300 gold in that pinata, so Edge would be very happy with that. That's way Three better than pinatas I opened up. What are usually in those? I'll ask you in a second, uh, because it is Rogue who is under attack in the bottom lane. Holy Phoenix is going to be eaten up, and it's back, back to safety. Who is waiting around the corner just in case Punch decides to go any further. A sort of confectionery, that's what I like in my pinatas. Uh -huh. But cash, I mean, who's <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Who could complain about a couple hundred gold? And Edge, I'll be taking this one. No, Punch will be taking this one. <laughs> Queen's Wrath will be finishing that one off. We're going to get a replay of something. Let's see, a replay oh, okay. of Syndra versus Rise. Well, he hit all his skill shots, so turns Rise out you're doing even more damage when you hit the skill shots. We've learned from watching Syndra that in the late game you can miss most of them and still get the kill. <laughs> and still kill someone. But, you know, the more buys you get, uh, maybe that'll actually be the case in the mid lane very soon. Anyway. I mean, he's massive. Uh, three zero Super zero. massive? Uh, you could say that. No, it's, it's Dark Pass. It's, oh, really? Okay. I do love watching me some DP. Dark Passage, a very strong team in their own right. No comment, boss. <laughs> no comment. That's your analysis on this one. Ku. Nice going back to base. Great skin, team and Vi. This is this is the what Punch has brought the team. Because hip, uh, sorry, Crush was very much a defensive jungler, and uh, Punch is the opposite. He shows the aggression. He loves getting and tussling in the enemy jungle, expecting there to be an initiation from the Tom Kench. They're waiting to see Soul and Guga walk up past the river. And uh, smartly, 
are kind of assessing the situation, realizing that their Rek'Sai was top, clearing out the top jungle. Those camps have been up for a while, therefore the Vi is in the bot side jungle. Putting two and two together and smartly pulling back. And Edge now taking his boob up. Uh, he's picked up the Morella Nomicon, so he's in great shape, whereas Immortaru, unfortunately, only sitting on a tier, which does represent his current mental state. <laughs> Four and two. 2,000 gold advantage to Kongdu. Uh, they pick up the first dragon, which will be Mountain. And next one's going to be Cloud, so we'll be combining that one. Somewhere Freak's happy. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> good, good Cloud Drake. He's a Cloud Drake enthusiast. That should actually be his NA title. Casters in general are. Oh, but Freak is the number one. He should take away NA Shoutcast and put Cloud Drake enthusiast <laughs> on his Twitter. <laughs> uh, like oh, holy Phoenix. Uh, Guga has been landing some great uh, bindings on Holy Phoenix through the standing phase. Has not really resulted in anything so far, but I see you. I see your cosmic binding accuracy. Speaking of being spotted, not sure if Ku was actually in vision range there. I'm going to say no, but once again, we're seeing him just camp around bot lane. Really wants to get some snowball going in a lane that can win. Probably too late to salvage mid lane, so given we've got tanks in top, it's understandable that he's been focusing on the bot lane, but Sol and Guga. These guys were pretty good in LSK the first time out, looked way better in the promotion tournament. We actually saw Nuclear today going over to the EU LCS, mm -hmm. uh, joining Che over at H2K, and it was Sol and Nuclear on the like, very much bottom tier two teams, Fenu and Comedy uh, Monster that impressed me. This engage time. Uh, kind of an engage because it has just put both of those members in stasis. Weppo in from the top lane, Punch taking a bunch of damage. Roach now coming in, does this one, Holy Phoenix. Soul will be finishing off the Mystic shot. Edge coming down into the bot lane, and Weppo, he's the only one remaining, but he is a very tanky puppy. Unfortunately, under five members, Duress unable to get out. Three and zero, Kongdu taking on home in the bottom lane. And this is what you expect their map movement is so superior to Dark Passage. Vi is clearing camps in the top. The one time she's not camping the bot lane, she's finally established it being on top. They choose their point. Five members show up in the bot lane. You'll actually see the, the, the poppy came through, but Rise anchored to mid lane, didn't even bother to ult to the bot lane, could have ghosted look for an ult, but kind of read the situation right with three people going down. Vi on the wrong side. There's something to be said about using your economy of time. There's so much opportunity cost when you're a jungler, because when you're somewhere, when you're clearing, you're not somewhere else. So far, Ku's been in the wrong positions, at the wrong positions at the wrong time, and now, unfortunately, is just out of position when he needed to be bombed. Sad times for Ku. Uh, he did take the opportunity to farm out the top wave. Mao Mortaru also stayed in the mid lane and farmed out his wave, so they got a bit of damage on the opposing towers, but all not that much. And Definitely not enough to uh, compensate for the seven kill deficit that uh, Dark Passage are currently under. Uh, 4,500 gold. And you may wonder why. Why did that work, whereas you know, all the camping from Ku didn't work? It's because they kind of prepped it up. They put down the right ward so they would have an excellent teleport spot for the Nautilus. And the Nautilus came in. We've come to the point where just getting these ganks, especially with Punch being so aggressive on the top side, making Vi predictable, is hard unless you invest the teleport. How many times yesterday did we see teams from the red side put down a ward at enemy blue side Krugs and four-man dive the bot tower? It happened maybe five to six times. You need to invest your top lane. You need to fully commit you to have everyone in position. Speaking of being in position... Or you just need to combo down the bot lane from Dark Passage. Double kill very fast there from Kongdu moving into the mid lane with this triple minion stack. And Punch following after Poppy, forcing the flash from Whippo. And Ku will have to back away. Nothing he can really do to defend this. Hammer has been brought down, punched off against the tower, but it's Ku under attack. <laughs> Look at the damage out from Edge. Delete Ku from the table. Meanwhile, Roach underneath the tower. He is so massive, not taking any damage. Now down in the inhibitor tower. Immortaru, nowhere to run. Not even his own base is safe. Gugir just needs to finish One him off. One more auto oh. attack. He has no flash, and Immortaru somehow escapes. Gugir saves the life of Roach and mid tower now being pushed in. That was a crazy trade in the mid lane. And once again, it's Kangdu Monster just all over Dark Passage. Before the tournament started, before we had Samsung firm, I was looking at this Kangdu team as the favorites for the tournament. Now they have Samsung to contend with, but we finally saw the Tom Ken show up and he was just donating a double kill over to the side of Kangdu Monster. And the snowball is on. We have already a huge gold lead, very close to 10,000 at 19 minutes. And the gulf in quality between these two teams is here for all to see. 
Kuge really turning up though, after losing that first blood, has only done good things for the team of Kongdu. Seven assists, I've been seeing binding after binding. That was an instant double bind coming out of uh, Rogue's ultimate. And just went down. He's just been doing a fantastic job for this Kongdu lineup, really synergizing with Sol in the bottom lane. We saw first pick Syndra's quite a bit towards the tail end of yesterday. Uh, there was the Echo counter pick that people were playing with in the mid lane. and. In general, some of the first pick Syndra struggled, not seeing that from Edge. Just now to play the pick champions, come to Monster, they can turn it on and they want more kills. Well, Ku's charging up the Vault Breaker into the Assault and Battery onto Sol, but his allies are already dead and so is he. Two, force, but no, blah, blah, blah. Two more kills over to Kongdu. I'm losing the ability to speak English. But... That's because you're so in awe of Kongdu Monster. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mid lane. Whip up, taking some damage from Edge. Uh, he is a puppy, but honestly, at this stage, when Cinder is so big, maybe he can pick up the kill, or maybe not, because there is Holy Phoenix landing up the shot and takes out his quarry. So, another two kills, or another one kill over to Dark Passage. That will be uh, another 50% the But this on is the definitely board. one of those meanwhile at times, Pauls. Meanwhile, at the ranch, in this case, the ranch is the inhibitor turret in the bot lane for Dark Passage. Kondu getting a few pot shots. Certainly, Edge was overextended, but it's just a flow on effect of the fact that every lane is winning from the side of Kongdu Monster, even though Nautilus has spent a lot of time roaming around, has the CS advantage over his lane. All three lanes winning CS in the jungle, close to doubling at this point, lets you know that uh, no problems at all. It's a stroll in the park for Kongdu Monster. This game is cascading out of control for Dark Passage. 10,000 gold leads, two dragon advantage, 10 kills over their opponents, five towers. And Baron's going to be up very shortly as well. Like, this team is so far ahead, and they have a fair jungler, a fair mid laner. Bot lane's been doing a great job. Top lane's doing Nautilus things. Like, Dark Passage, I don't really see how they win this game. I think that's, you know, that's honestly the way it is. You know, back in previous seasons, we did have those conversations where, like, okay, what's the chances? You know, how does this team come back? In LCK, we're realist pulse. They're not going to come back. They're far too far behind, too early. There's less gold in the game than there was before, so the gold lead actually means more than it did in Season 4, in Season 3. But there to be over a 10,000 gold lead at 21 minutes, when we average, what, 1,500 gold lead at this point, lets you know that uh, the gold in items, even if Dark Passage made the right engage, they're too far behind for it to matter. Rogue's being chased down. Edge is over the wall. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what was that damage? Oh, Rogue instantly dies. Holy Phoenix going to evaporate underneath Punch. Immortaru, there's the ultimate. The quick R to the face will finish him off. And 3 and 0. Another another flurry of kills to Kongdu. That was just dirty in the top jungle. I mean, just everyone's squishy. We're still so early in the game. The only tank purchases are on the poppy. You can see Ku is going predictably given his style for a damage build, but that means he will also evaporate the moment that someone like Edge hits a skill shot. We saw the bot lane turret started to get down. Well, top lane turret is gone. Top lane inhibitor is gone, and hard to see this game going much longer than 25 minutes from a Kongdu monster perspective. Honestly, this may be the fastest game of the tournament so far. I thought J Team Immortals' first game that we saw at the tournament was a fast one, but Kongdu monster, 22 minutes in, are closing in on these Nexus towers now. And they have a pretty decently sized minion wave. Probably one more fight left in Dark Passage with, with the initiate, but he's the tankiest member, and he's gonna have to get swallowed up by Rogue. Immortal comes in. Kuge not gonna be dropping just yet, but it's Ku who assassinates Sol in the back lines. Kuge also gonna fall to Ku with a nice flash coming out there. Balls all over the floor from Edge, trying to find his kill onto Ku in return. Vault Breaker doesn't quite land, but it's dropped by the Dark Sphere. Punch now with Roach, going two versus three, but the cavalry has arrived in the form of Syndra. Whippo charges in, lines up the shot, but he's gonna be knocked away by Scatter the Weak. Holy Phoenix trying his damnness to make this game happen for his team, but the defense is just not strong enough. Rogue One down, and Ed trying to find a kill onto the Nexus, onto the spawn pad. The rest of his team finishing off this game onto the tower, and a team fight within the base of Dark Passage, 20 to five. Kongdu may be backing away from this because of the respawn timers being so low. Yeah, the spawn timers are so low at 23 minutes, we still have just over level 10 members on Dark Passage side, nowhere near getting rank three in their ultimates. So the spawn time is around 20 seconds. P importantly, Soul was one of the people dead, so the turret taking threat is gonna take longer. They were focusing on the kills. They'll go back, spend their gold. 20 to five is the kill lead. An embarrassment of riches for the likes of Punch and Edge, eight and nine kills respectively. And they'll just turn around and end the game when they so damn well please. Coo saying, look guys, my damage build is working out for me. I got two kills in the last fight. Yes, I died very quickly, as you just saw, but I did defend the base. 
so my damage build is working. Well, he's got a Spectre's Cow, which unfortunately kind of doesn't do too much against he's a tank, the, the Void Staff and the uh, Leandris Torment completed. Punch is going to take some free damage. Yeah, not very much of that free damage, though. Not all you people play, unfortunately. But Whipper is going to be jumping onto Sol, and everyone's taking the passive to safety. See you later. Uh, Edge is going to be slammed against the wall, and more Taru, the follow up, but no one's dead just yet from Kongdu. Me However, many members dead from Dark Passage within their own base. And even though that wasn't Kongdu finishing off the game two minutes ago, oh, oh Roach, Roach on you. styling on Dark Passage within their base. I think he knows this game is done, has not died once in this game, and Kongdu finishing off the game in style. Take the series over Dark Passage. And if you take the nameplate off Pulse, could have said that was Samsung Galaxy. Such was the clean play from Kongnu Monster. I put this team around mid 